Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by the Little Shaman Healing. That's me, the Little Shaman. Today I want to talk to you about why we always say stop explaining to the narcissist. If you saw the episode of the show entitled Stop Explaining to the Narcissist, then you know that repeatedly explaining your position to them is pointless. What some people might not realize, though, is that the reason it's pointless is because most narcissists are dedicated to misunderstanding you. In a very real way, their survival depends on not understanding and on denying what you're saying. What you're saying is being perceived as hurtful, deceitful, dishonest, whatever. They essentially believe you are trying to trick them. If you're saying good things, they'll believe you're trying to manipulate and fool them. If they believed you and you were not being sincere, this would leave them open to being hurt and they're certainly not going to allow that. If you're saying bad things, they'll believe you're trying to hurt them. You're just saying they did something wrong to shame them because you're a bad person who wants to hurt them. Everything is about self-preservation with these people, and most of their behavior is an overreaction to perceived threats that are hugely exaggerated in the narcissist's mind. For the most part, this is because narcissists do not believe other people are capable of being honest. They always think there's an ulterior motive or a scam or a manipulation going on. Part of this is because that's how they operate. They don't understand the value or importance of honesty, integrity, or sincerity, and they actually disdain and look down on those things. But part of it is also probably because since they can't trust their own feelings, they don't understand how other people's emotions work. Their truth changes with their feelings, which change on a dime, so they would have absolutely no trust in the feelings of other people. How do they know that person's feelings won't change? They wholeheartedly feel that they will. Since they perceive their own feelings as facts, regardless of how unstable they are, no proof or truth you show them will matter if how they feel contradicts that. For example, if the narcissist hates themselves right now, nothing you say or do will be perceived as anything other than hateful. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what you say. If the narcissist believes they're the greatest thing that ever lived right now, everything you say and do will be perceived as echoing that sentiment. Your actual motives or feelings are not going to be considered here. Narcissists don't seem to understand that other people have feelings. They think they understand because intellectually they know that, but they don't seem to realize that other people's feelings are separate and different from theirs. It's all subconscious, like so much about them. They believe the way they feel is the way everybody feels. If you ask them whether or not they understand you have feelings, they'll probably say yes. If you ask them what they think your feelings are, like if you say, how do you think I'm feeling right now? They will often simply recite generic or vague things like sad, bad, mad, happy. And these will often be more accordance with how they feel, not you. If you ask what they think your feelings about them are, that's when you'll likely hear more specific emotions. And many times they're going to be way off base. That's because they're actually talking about their own feelings. They mistakenly believe these feelings are coming from other people. In other words, they think their feelings are your feelings. They don't realize there's a difference. For more information on that, check out the episode of the show entitled The Narcissist's True Motivation. It explains that in a little more detail. Narcissism is defined as a failure to distinguish the self from the external world. This is something we usually only see in small children. This is why they tell you to talk to your children about divorce and things like that so they'll know it's not their fault. The world of children is very self-centered, with everything that happens being perceived as happening because of them, good or bad. Narcissists operate almost exactly the same way. They have never matured beyond that belief. This is why they believe their feelings are everybody's feelings. They are the most important thing in their little world, the only real thing, and the only person that matters. They project their feelings onto the world at large, and they don't understand that what they are experiencing is actually a boomerang effect of those feelings simply coming back to them, not the genuine emotions of other people. This happens because their feelings are too overwhelming and uncomfortable for them to deal with, so they push them off onto other people. Now they actually have an enemy to fight. You. Now those feelings are coming from you, not from themselves. This is similar to something we see in animals called redirected aggression. It's the result of frustration and over-arousal. Let's say there's two dogs in a house looking out the window. These dogs live together and they get along most of the time. Now a strange dog walks by the window and both dogs inside the house start to become agitated. The longer the strange dog is out there, the more agitated and frustrated the two dogs in the house become. One dog at the window bumps up against the other dog in their excitement and suddenly a fight breaks out. Why did this happen? Because anytime there is agitation or over-arousal, aggression can follow because of the pressure that causes, and it will usually find the most convenient target. 
In the case of the narcissist, that's you. You are not the cause of the overarousal or the upset. They're beating themselves up with internal abuse nonstop, regardless of what's going on. However, you're going to be the one they lash out at because of it. Why? Because you're there. You're a convenient target. They have redirected their aggression and hurt at you because there is nobody else. The pressure and frustration from this internal abuse that they heap on themselves is so severe that they have to release it somehow. It comes out in many ways. Aggression can take many forms from covert to blatant. Ignoring somebody, spreading lies about them, spending recklessly, nasty, nasty sarcasm. These things are all aggression. But the target is always somebody else. Regardless of how it comes out, the target is always somebody else. We see the same thing with a man who cannot strike back at his boss at work, so he abuses his wife. She may then abuse the children, who may then in turn abuse the pets or other children. This is redirected aggression. The difference is that the narcissist's, quote, enemy is internal and largely fictional. The people in our example know that they're redirecting their aggression to someone who doesn't deserve it. The narcissist experiences the world differently and does not believe that. This is why they're closer to the animal analogy than the human one. The dogs are simply fighting to release the frustration and pressure. There's no understanding about who deserves what. They're simply reacting to overwhelming feelings and attacking the nearest thing to let the pressure off and get some relief from it. This is how most narcissists operate. The reason narcissists employ all of these subconscious mental gymnastics is so they can deny all of these things, all these negative, horrible feelings, and all of this horrible abuse they're putting on themselves. Their entire life is predicated on ignoring all of these things and pretending everything is totally fine. Better than fine, in fact. This is the fabled false self we often hear about with narcissism. That false self is the only barrier between themselves and the truth, and it's flimsy even at the best of times. Behind that barrier is every ugly, worthless, despicable thing they live in fear that other people will see. This is why explaining doesn't work. This is why they're dedicated to misunderstanding you. If they're forced to acknowledge what you're saying, it completely disrupts their denial. This can be catastrophic for a narcissist. Those who are forced to confront the truth and are stripped of that barrier often decompensate, which is what some people call collapsing. They might even become suicidal. It is imperative that they keep that fiction in place and the things you are saying, regardless of what they are, threaten that fiction and are therefore intolerable. People often think the narcissist's abusive behavior is what they're trying to hide. It isn't. The abusive behavior is what they are using to try to keep that fiction in place. They abuse those that they think will disrupt or destroy that fiction in an attempt to force them to stop or to back down. What they're actually trying to hide is what they really think they are. An unlovable, ugly, disgusting monster that no one could tolerate or even look at. It's a sad irony that in their hysteria to protect the fiction designed to hide that ugly monster, they often end up convincing their loved ones that that's exactly what they are. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by Little Shaman Healing. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you, and have a wonderful day.